Welcome to a new Volog, a rather short video for today. I'm going to be showing you the latest revision of the Volink USB to serial adapter. This is revision C and while this doesn't necessarily bring any new functionality to the Volink, it does optimize the design for manufacturing a little more, which makes it easier for me to build these units. Before I go into more details, let me just quickly mention that if, you, if you'd like to order one of these, they are available on my Tindy store and there will be links in the description below to the product page. Uh, Revision C has already been selling on my Tindy store for a while. So like I mentioned, no new functionality added in Revision C, but that's okay because I'm pretty happy with the functionality we have so far. I mean, there is USB Type-C, which means you no longer need to resort to the older uh, micro USB cables. You got overcurrent protection with a 500 milliamps resettable fuse. You got ESD protection, and we still have a high quality, high speed USB to serial converter in the form of the CP2102N, which enables baud rates up to 3 million baud, and this significantly improves the time you need to flash your board. And you will quickly get used to this higher speed so much that when you switch to some other converter, or a board that only supports a lower baud rate, you will feel how slow that is. We still have the 500 milliamps a low dropout regulator, which provides 3.3 volts to the uh, target board and 500 milliamps is enough to cover the majority of boards that you will be programming. For example, all of the ESP32 based boards that I designed can be powered by the Volink while flashing firmware with no issues. Additionally, I showed in a recent video that with a custom uh, optional cable like this, you can uh, safely flash Shelly relays without having them connected to mains voltage because the Volink can safely provide 3.3 volt power to the Shelly reel relay while programming it. The sponsor of this video is PCBWay.com, a professional PCB manufacturer with excellent quality and fast turnaround times. But you can get more than PCBs manufactured with PCBWay. They also do PCB assembly, injection molding, 3D printing, machining, various parts, so you can have an entire prototype built using their services. Check out their website linked below. We still have the uh, Volink uh, standard uh, connection, which allows connecting via a, a JST SH pigtail to the target board, or you can also use the more traditional 0.1 inch header pins. And one of the most useful features of this board is that we still have that auto reset capability for ESP devices, meaning this board will automatically toggle the reset and IO0 line to put the ESP device into programming mode. No need to push any buttons while plugging in the board, none of that, everything is automatic. And this of course is very convenient for the user, but also for the manufacturer, which is myself, uh, because it helps uh, save on the bomb cost for the target devices, because you no longer need to add switches to them. And this is one of the most important design for optimizations I did for Revision C. I switched from a circuit with two transistors and two resistors, so four components in total for the auto reset circuitry, to a single uh, component, which is this guy right here. This little guy allows me to now place one component instead of four because it includes the two transistors and two resistors used in the auto reset circuitry under one roof. And as far as cost goes, not a huge saving, but whatever improvements I can have in the assembly process, like placing fewer parts, matters a lot because I can get more boards done in the same time and I can have less bomb items to worry about. There is also the uh, enable line capacitor, which is uh, now built in. This helps with uh, timing issues for the reset procedure. Boards that do not have this capacitor might throw a fatal error occurred when you try to flash new firmware, but that's taken care of by this capacitor to ensure it never happens. As far as uh, physical dimensions and position of the mounting holes uh, or the uh, volting connector, everything stayed the same with Revision C and I kept that in mind because if someone designed this into a case together with other components or someone 3D printed the case for this, it would sure help if dimensions stayed the same and everything still fits. So no need to worry about that. And if you haven't already guessed it, this design is still open source so you can find the source files on my GitHub repository. That's pretty much all I had to share about the Revision C. Of course, I would like to hear your feedback in the comments below. Let me know how you feel about the Volink Revision C, if you think it's better than other USB to serial converters or worse, or if you'd like to see other features, just leave a comment below. 
As usual, I would appreciate if you would uh, smash that like button if you haven't already, or maybe consider supporting me on Patreon with as little as $1 per month to help me keep these videos coming once per week. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.